And back in the CSI room, Poe suited up and opened the next evidence bag. Bradshaw took up station at her laptop. So far he hadn't passed her anything. He hoped too soon. He was tired of being sweaty and grimy, and he was tired of looking through stuff that had no bearing on anything. So far his gamble wasn't paying off. He decided to sod logic, and just stick his hand in until he could pass her something to examine. His hand touched some papers. They must have been at the bottom of the bin as they were stuck together and stained with tea or coffee. Poe handed them to the CSI technician who separated and photographed them before passing them to Bradshaw. For an hour they worked through the second of three evidence bags. Bradshaw kept up the steady stream of chatter as they did. He suspected it was keeping her mind off the smell. She asked him what Flynn might call her baby. Poe had no idea. He still couldn't get his head around the idea that his boss would soon have an infant to care for. I think they should call him Bruce if he's a boy and Diana if she's a girl. That would be cool choices. They wouldn't happen to be superhero names, would they? He said. No answer. I bet they are. Again, no answer. Poe looked up, but Bradshaw wasn't listening. Instead, she was poring over images on her laptop screen. What looked like the lens and clip from a small head torch was slotted over the end of her iPhone. A lead connected the phone to her laptop. What's that on your phone, Tilly? It's a macro lens, Poe, she said without looking up. It transforms the camera into a digital microscope. I've been able to take detailed photographs at times 21 magnification. Of? But she was back in her mind again, oblivious to the outside world. Poe kept quiet and let her work. Eventually she raised her hand and punched the air in triumph. Yes, she said. And then she told him why. And everything changed.